no, 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 that's a great, no, that's a, that's a great overview. That's a great overview. Overview. So, so let me ask you. Um, what, I got to go back to the, to the beginning. When you mentioned that you were one of the only black mm -hmm. students in mechanical engineering. Yeah. Or are you talking to in engineering, engineering and one of the few in university period. Right. Right. Relative to the population of the university. And, and how old were you when you started university? Seventeen Good. years old. Seventeen. Okay. Because yes. at eighteen you said you were working. Yeah, so I, I was, had the opportunity to have internships um, through a program called Inroads that placed um, talented minorities into yeah. corporate culture. So I was at Nortel um, at age 18, um, literally working as a verification engineer. Right. 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 Yeah. So let's tell, tell us a little bit more about, about, about Neckles uh, Global. Yep. So, so Neckles Global Enterprise is simply a holding company, mm -hmm. um, and it has investments in uh, commercial real estate and businesses. Um, both in the distribution business and also the manufacturing side as well. Right. How, how has this been for you? Because, again, it's been turbulent times for a lot of people, uh, a lot of companies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. how, how has that been for, for Knuckles? Did you have a certain strategy uh, that you started to like, button down the hatches? or was there's, what, what are your criteria? Yep. So I've always believed in um, positive cash flow. Um, earlier on in my business game, um, I realized that was what was killing me. So I went out there and bought assets that would give me that positive cash flow to pay for my living expenses while I can focus on growing the business as opposed to trying to pay the next bill. Um, so my philosophy is to sort of own assets that produce positive income and then use that positive income to help stimulate and grow your business. Like, for example, for anybody who's watching out there, what would... Uh Give us an example of what kind of asset that you bought um, in order to stimulate this kind of growth. Well, I'll, give you, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example of the way I think in terms of business. Um, when we started TN Tech Canada, we needed inventory. Um, but instead of us going out there to finance inventory, we negotiated a just-in-time process where mm. we went out there, sold the product first, and then shipped the product directly from the manufacturer to the site. So it was just a way of thinking and starting off, understanding that we need positive cash flow. So we go out there and get some contracts and then actually get the inventory for those contracts. Other than that, that's a business asset, which I would call a positive cash flow. Real estate is where I'd have a, a apartment building with 10 units and I have tenants that would be paying um, monthly income, right? And mm -hmm. I, after I pay my expenses, it's a net profit for me. Right, so you're dealing mostly with, with industrial Property. So, so mo mo most of it's mo it's residential. Mo oh, it is most, residential. Most of the okay. is residential. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So because what I want to do with the show is I want to I want entrepreneurs to be able to think uh, or, or or find out ways, learn ways to be able to overcome the hurdles. And you mentioned it, cash flow. Yeah. Cash flow is always the biggest one. Everybody yep. always states that. And an underfunded business is a crippled business. Yes. And truthfully, that's really how we started. We've we've been underfunded mm -hmm. from day one, and we've had to grow our sales and we grow organically as we discover what our business model mm -hmm. is. But that's, I wouldn't recommend that to most businesses or any business, because I'm, yep. I'm like you, mm -hmm. or, or I, I, get, I gather from what you're saying yep. is that you would never start a business again unless it was properly funded. That, and also I would have the model that is appropriate for the funds that I have. Right. Um, so I wouldn't go into business knowing that at month three I'm gonna need an injection of X dollars and those X dollars are not in the bank account today. Um, Fair enough. So I would make sure the business model realizes the fact that I don't have X dollars in the account today, and I would put strategies in place to do that, mm. right? And I think that's the concept where we don't, the idea is, you know, go big or go home, but you got to be realistic to the resources you have. Yeah. How can I build a sustainable business with the resources I have today without banking on the bank's loan, without banking on an investor coming in, or without banking on winning the lottery, Yeah. right? I think that will completely minimize the risk because you're putting things in perspective. Mm. Like when, you know, obviously there's a mind shift mm -hmm. for you when you said you left the, corp the corporate world to start your own business. I mean, there's, there's a huge difference. And I think sometimes we underestimate it. And again, I like to hear what your thoughts mm -hmm. were, but how much we take for granted the salary or we take for granted the car allowance. Yep. And, and so for you, what kind of, what, when, when did it hit you the hardest when you made that shift? Like, was there a day that you went, oh man, what am I doing? The psychological aspect was tough because coming out of a decent corporate job, um, having a condominium on the lake, having a nice car, having to sort of make that sacrifice to give up those material things that we think we want, was, that was a reality check where it's, I have a bigger purpose, where I'm making sacrifice, I'm investing my time. Um, but at the moment that my business was still not uh, taken off the ground, I still realize that I'm more happy where I am today than if I was at that corporate job because of the potential to be where I truly want to be. 
So I think that it, the psychological aspect is tough, but always knowing the potential that the minute that your business gets off the ground, you would truly be where you want to be is worth those moments where you're not where you want to be at all. Fair enough, fair enough. And, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs um, can definitely understand that. And then there's a lot of them that get lost, mm -hmm. get buried. Yeah. So co coming back to before we get into the, the psychology of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and whatnot, what is a typical day for Ricky Knuckles? Like what is, explain that to us. I, I like to look at, the, um, I speak about the difference between business owners and um, self-employed people. And the typical day for me right now is truly doing what I love to do, which is being able to go out to the community, speak to youth, um, do workshops, do seminars, encourage other people, inspire other people. Um, and I've been awarded that ability because I have a lot of systems in place. Mm. Um, so my Monday morning um, starts at possibly 10:30, 11. Um, it's the toughest day to get out of bed. Um, and I would just make some follow-up calls and make sure that things are running smoothly. Um, Tuesdays are my days where I network and I meet people that I meet on the weekends and through my events and I just listen, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Um, and look for new opportunities. Um, Wednesday is my strategy day. How am I going to take my business to the next level? I meet with the divisions heads of oh, the heads of each of my divisions and say, what's going on? What resources do you need? Are we on track? Um, Thursdays again, networking because networking is important for any entrepreneur. Um, and then Fridays is again just a relaxed follow-up day. Take care of the things that weren't done. So, so I'm kind of um, sort of rewarded in the sense that I don't have much day-to-day -day tasks to do. Um, but as I grow, I'm always looking for more opportunities. But where I want to spend my time, where I'm passionate about, is a community and inspiring other people. So I want my day-to-day -to, -day to be just speaking and doing things like this to let entrepreneurs out there know that it's possible if you work hard, you're committed. Um, and I think that's just really the Ricky Knuckles day. So I, I, I'm, I'm gathering that you have a, a great team around you. Mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm assuming that if, if you are spending two days a week networking, and one day a week with your department heads, making sure they have the resources they need to succeed, you must have a pretty good team, right? Like, I'm not saying you don't have your challenging days, but I'm assuming yeah. that you have yeah. your team. How many people are working with you right now? I have um, six core people that, that are on my team running the divisions that I have. Um, I, I think that I've had my fair share of employees that um, gave me a difficult time, and I could speak about that for days. Um, but what I've found is that I've sort of partnered more with entrepreneurial-like people want to build something and they don't have the resources, they don't have the business expertise, but they have the drive and the passion. So with my financial resources and my expertise put together, we create a business. Right. So I, I find that my team is other entrepreneurs uh, and that's why exactly I have a great team because entrepreneurs don't complain. Um, they just get the job done. Um, whether they're literally running the business and the idea from, from their self, they're still entrepreneurs in the way they think and the way they operate, mm. right? Um, so I look at entrepreneurship more of a way of thinking, the way of getting things done. Corporations even have entrepreneurs. The people that are movers and shakers, they're not confined within the box. They're thinking, how can I make this better? 